Sometimes I get enough of having to listen to Nathan Oakley, Quantum Eraser, Which It Gets It, Tenth Man and the like in order to make my videos. So I decided to look at Quantum Eraser's website, globeterminator.com. I saw the same old nonsense there in the childish layout with the silly emojis and the stupid pubescent insults, but at least I wouldn't have to listen to the irritating voice of this self-proclaimed genius. He posted seven of what he calls his flat earth proofs. In a series of seven videos I will pulverize each and every one of them. This is part two, the black swan. This one also is very simple. He starts with the Bodus Tollens R statement. If P then Q, not Q, therefore not P. If the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles, P, then every horiz horizon distance measurement must be no more than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet, Q. He refers to the geometric horizon, but it is not important in this case. Dealing with visual observations, we are dealing with the visible horizon. And he adds curve calculators, thinking that they calculate for the ge geometric horizon. And that's the first wrong turn he is taking. Most curve calculators include atmospheric refraction. Atmospheric refraction is caused by differences in the density of the atmosphere. These differences are generally stacked vertically. And under most conditions, especially when an observation is done over water, from dense upward to less dense. This means that generally light bends downwards into the denser medium, so an object, or in this case the horizon, at a distance is generally observed at a higher position than it is in reality. So his first statement P is wrong. It should be, if the Earth is a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles P, then every horizon distance measurement must be no less than 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height in feet. Q. This obviously destroys his conclusion. Not Q, horizon distance greater than 9.41 miles, therefore not P, Earth is not a sphere. And if quantum eraser had used Walter Bislin's advanced curvature calculator, he would have seen that, although the distance calculation of an observer height of 8 feet without refraction indeed comes out to be 3.46356 miles, that's only slightly less than 3.4648, the result of the 1.225 times the square root of the observer's height calculation. When you introduce a refraction of just 0.058885 degrees, the distance to the horizon is 9.41725 miles. And yes, that amount of refraction is extreme, but aren't the deformations of the R rigs also extreme, indicating an extreme amount of atmospheric distortion. When the distortions are gone, the picture shows what the globe model predicts. The bottom of the left oil rig has disappeared. But quantum eraser is wrong on a most basic level. In modus tollens arguing, you are not supposed to change the arguments along the way. If the first P is the Earth being a sphere with a radius of 3,959 miles, then the second P cannot be the Earth is a sphere. You can't just leave out part of the initial P to draw a conclusion that, by the way, was false anyhow. How stupid can anyone be? Oh well, it's just quantum eraser. 
who definitely has deserved his nickname, Questionable Education. <laughs>